The miniature gaming marketplace is filled with such a wide variety of creative flavors and mechanics and settings and communities and individuals, yet somehow the marketplace is completely dominated by a single company. Welcome to part two of a video series asking the question, why do miniature games stay small and what can we do to help with that? Roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome to Corner Case, you're in the hobby corner. I'm your host, your smooth on-ramp to fun, your best friend, Deck. Today we ask, why do miniature games stay small? This is an absolutely huge discussion. This is part two of a video series. By no means are we finding a definitive answer. We hope that by exploring these topics with the community, we're able to spark some inspiration, some solutions that we can all do to create a more sustainable economy of miniature games, a more level playing field, and we think now is a great time to do that given the new technological developments and just the overall landscape of product. In today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about search engine optimization, SEO. But in the previous episode, we talked about models. So if you'd like to see that episode, link below. Please check it out after this video. We beg you anything to help us with our retention, please. In regards to SEO, it's a pretty difficult topic to discuss. We're going to try and analyze some examples. I just want to be up front here that any critique is not meant maliciously it's meant constructively nothing personal we do it out of love and with that anyone in the comments please try to keep it positive do it out of love we ultimately want to mine good insights from these discussions in the previous episode we read a comment from zombie monkey 7 who bought a malifaux box specifically the dirty work box and assembled painted and wanted to see what other people had posted of those models that they bought pretty common buy a box of space marines and you paint a couple or you paint one and you want to post it up and be a part of the group. What Zombie Monkey 7 found was that after they had posted to Twitter and Reddit, they could not find other examples of painted work of the same models, except for a few. So the experience there was that Zombie Monkey 7 felt like it made the game feel a lot smaller because the online footprint was visibly smaller given their algorithm, which should have been optimized for minis already given given their, their search history, I'm assuming. So there's a lot to unpack in regards to this experience, but I think talking about this specific experience is already pretty productive for us to try and mine some insights. Let's take a look. First, the Dirty Work box is very specifically an Explorer Society box. So Explorer Society is a new faction in Malifaux for as of third edition. It was not present in second edition. If you look at the packaging design of this specific box, and this is true of any Malifaux box right now, the number one information you see is the illustration of the models contained within, but it's like a concept artwork, a strictly illustration artwork. Then there is the faction information, which is in the form of the color plus logo marking. After that, next in the hierarchy is the words dirty work, which is the thematic name for the box. And then below that, finally, are the keywords associated with the models. And for those of you following along who don't necessarily play Malifaux, the keyword system is a system they use to communicate model compatibility. So they're basically your sectorial for infinity or your sub faction. If your big faction is Arcanists. Your sub-faction would be uh, Master Rasputina is December keyword, but some of her models may have multiple keywords like MNSU or what, Forgotten. Those aren't real, but you know what I mean. Models have keywords that associate them to different sub-factions. Only when you sing around to the back of the box that you see the actual names of the models. In this particular box, you have a named model, a named character, and then you have two minions that are called operatives. Let's unpack a little bit like what's going on here. Obviously, the most important information on the box at a glance at retail is the faction information, right? When you walk up to the wall in the game store for the game you want to play, the first thing absolutely is you look for your faction. So that information being big is really important because at retail, you see the cheerleader effect, for lack of a better word, probably not good for 2022, but you know what I mean. You see the squad effect of all your explore society boxes in one spot and then you go to the one you want now i think this is where it starts to get like a little tricky because the next information down in the hierarchy is dirty work now let me just take a moment to explain hierarchy this is like term we often use in various disciplines in design visual hierarchy or just your hierarchy what information is most important now how you determine what information is most important in any composition it has to do with very often proportion usually the biggest information is most important central 
centrally located, perhaps its color. It can be any number of things that make this specific piece of information the highest priority or highest in your hierarchy. And then you kind of go down from there, like which things are most important, prioritized by the design. So in this case, what I'm looking at is elements on the box. The faction information is absolutely the biggest information on the box besides the obviously the game Malifo, and then the keywords after. Even if you're just looking in the store for the box that you need, the first thing you're gonna see really is dirty work. That's kind of like a thematic name. And I think that name tells me that the team at Weird is really prioritizing kind of like a branded and narrative experience of this game, which I think is absolutely important. Absolutely, absolutely important. If we're specifically having a conversation only thinking about search, then I would say that that's probably like a suboptimal piece of information to place that prominently on the box. I think in terms of visual priority, that shouldn't have as high of a priority as something that is more searchable, especially once you start to go online and search for these words as well, Malifo dirty work, you basically can't search it without placing Malifo in as a prefix. So dirty work by itself isn't anything that's like particularly ownable. And what it does too, is it adds another thing that people can Google. When I'm Googling for this box set, what am I looking for? Am I Googling Malifo dirty work? Am I Googling dirty work? Am I Googling Malifo Dua, Malifo Syndicate, Dua by itself, Syndicate by itself, Operatives, Corvus, Rook. There's any number of things that you can Google, but how many of those things were like actually unique to Malifo? And I think that's really the tough part. And to be fair, I never thought about this topic in this amount of detail until I saw this comment from Zombie Monkey 7 So I don't, I'm not faulting anyone at Weird for not thinking this way. This is just a thought exercise and a discussion that we're having now. And once you start to compare, and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to drop the F-bomb. We don't like to do it on this channel. Now in 40K, if you look at a box of Primaris Intercessors, look at the hierarchy of information on the box. The Warhammer logo is actually pretty small. The Space Marines faction name is pretty small. The actual visual priority is going to what the models look like and the name Primaris Intercessors. So I think that sets like a pretty strong expectation to the user of what they should be Googling later. So they just Google Primaris Intercessors. And on top of that, at least product in my industry, when you wanna name product, even if you wanna name colors sometimes, you would go through legal to make sure that the those names are not taken by anyone else. So I assume that you can see the way GW runs their house. You know that they have an aggressive legal team they have in the past, pursued lawsuits, etc. They're very, very diligent about creating names for all of their properties, names for absolutely everything. I can guarantee you that they searched these names beforehand, ran it through the legal filter, and on top of that, ran it through the marketing filter to make sure that not only were the names memorable, easy for people to pronounce and say, but also like that other other brands aren't using this name, that they're absolutely the only ones within the space that are using the name and maximizing the chances that if you only use one word from what they've told you on the box, that you'll probably find what you're looking for. Any one of these words on the top of the box, Warhammer, Primaris, Intercessor, Space Marine, you Google any single one of those and you're pretty close to finding a Primaris Intercessor. That's something that GW does absolutely phenomenally well. Again, I apologize for dropping the F-bomb, but 40K is absolutely absolutely ahead of the game in terms of that. If we compare that to what we're seeing on the Malifo side, unfortunately, and this is out of love, a lot of the words on the box are pretty hard to Google. Dua by itself, Syndicate by itself, Dirty Work by itself, Operatives by itself. The only things that you can really Google and get what you want, Corvus Rook, the name of the character, Malifo. And you have to, I think, plan for the chance that people might buy into Malifo not exactly the way you're supposed to. In Malifo, you definitely can't play a game without a master. You at least need a master model. So you're probably starting with a core box. But let's say that someone didn't get that assisted sale at the store or online and they just bought a box because it looked cool. What if they bought dirty work because they thought it looked cool, you know, with no intention of playing and then they found out later they need a master model? Well, then you have an uncomfortable moment, you know, and I bring this up because that's another option for Googling. You know, you could Google English Ivan crew, you know, and you probably see your operatives, but people might not know that. I think we've gleaned a lot of insights just from comparing what GW is doing on their packaging compared to what's going on on the Malfo side. I'm not gonna go into specifics about anything in Infinity, but it's not that much better. The next thing in regards to naming is actually equity. Space Marine is something that GW has equity in. Absolutely, if you Google Space Marine, you're gonna get it. And over time, I have no doubt that Primaris 
intercessor, these words will have equity in them. So that's another benefit of creating words for the units in your game, for creating anything within your fictional world. You get equity in that. And I would argue that not making up names for the things in your game is leaving equity on the table. And I think equity is very, very hard to maintain, really, really easy to lose. And here's an example again from Malifaux. From Malifaux, they made the switch over from M2E to M3E, and they dropped some masters. So for example, Ramos, dead man's hand now, Ramos's box was just straight up called the MNSU, if I'm not wrong, an M2E. In M3E, there's no longer a MNSU box. Now, the units that used to be in the MNSU box are in two different boxes. There is the Rift in the Union box, and there is the Support Staff box. So when I just Googled M3E MNSU, I absolutely did not get anything Malifaux related. I had to actually type out Malifaux in order to get it. And then in order to actually figure out which box Joss was in, I actually had to Google M3E Malifaux Joss. There was a little bit of equity lost in MNSU in the switchover from M2E to M3E. M3E because of that that mix up in the packaging. I think if I were to think about how another game might do it, I think Infinity does a tiny bit better. They might say Yujing support pack and, and maybe that's a way to manage it. But I was doing the math and there's like almost 40 plus masters or something in Malifaux now. And if each one of those masters is a key word, you know, I think there has to be a better way to manage it with the consumer so that it's easier to Google it, easier to create a bigger online footprint. Some of these words that are used for master keywords are just absolutely not ownable whatsoever. Whatsoever. So I play Rasputina, they're like the December keyword, there's the forgotten keyword, there's all these keywords that are very, very flavorful, but they're not super ownable. I think the point of this specific video in terms of search, we did a teardown, we did a critique of what's going on on Malfo packaging. Out of love, absolutely out of love, this is my favorite game. If I could, I would spend all day playing and painting this game. But in terms of trying to on-ramp people who are new, in terms of trying to create like a big community around these models in this game, I think doing a little bit of work to optimize the whole marketing effort to SEO a little bit better, create a more ownable branded language around as much of the world as possible, I think actually is a very good step forward. How do we do this on our end? I think what we do is we start to establish precedences that kind of encourage better behaviors. So for example, Maybe we, when we post images of our completed works, not only do we post them in groups or in social that is visible, searchable by Google. You know, Instagram isn't always like the first thing Google is gonna look at when you Google image search. You could hashtag more specifically, Malifaux. Either we build up equity in M3E, we hashtag it more, or we build up equity in Malifaux by hashtagging that more. If we're talking about masters in Malifaux, maybe we actually use the master name, Rasputina Crew. If we talk about anything in Infinity, we have to actually actually name the unit. Again, orc troops. You just have to name the unit so that there is some equity in that online. That way it's searchable. We just have to be deliberate on our end, building up the content that is properly tagged so that when new users come in, new hobbyists come in, they have an easier time searching that backlog of work. It's like the best thing that I can think of as a solution to this specific issue that we as a community can do together. But if you guys have any other solutions, please post them down below. And I'm not a marketing guy, I'm a product guy, so I'm not the best to talking about marketing. If any of you guys are, definitely absolutely please, please share with the group because this channel is about educating ourselves together so that we're not just subject to the ebb and flow of honestly our hobby that is a consumer hobby. We are responsible for our own fun and we are able to take action to make a more sustainable hobby community together. There will probably be more videos about this topic in the future. Of course, always nuanced. You know you're in the hobby corner when we're nuanced. Not the next one. I think I'm gonna build up a little bit more to discuss for next time, but absolutely love, love discussing with you guys. So hit us in the comments, hit us in the Discord, the Facebook. Absolutely appreciate every one of you who are contributing to this positivity, this constructive criticism to make a better world. Please like and subscribe, do all the YouTube things. We're desperate. See you next time. Liberate the Emperor by subscribing now. Only in death does subscribing end.